This year, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, many organisations within the third sector are looking to rethink and reimagine their services. And we believe that there's never been a better time to think about the way that we are working with communities. If you ask anyone who works in the third sector what the most important element of their service is, they will undoubtedly all say the same thing, the service users. So why is it that we include those accessing the service so little in the decisions that dictate the support that they receive? By adopting one simple core principle, you could boost engagement from your service users, give voice to those who might be underrepresented within their communities, and help to promote values that we should all be striving to achieve, values like equality and diversity. You could build valuable peer networks and make your organisation more relevant, effective and sustainable. It's time that more of us sought to adapt a value-driven approach, built on the principle that those who are affected by a service are best placed to help design it. So let's talk about co-production. Co-production is all about giving equal importance to the input and opinions of those with lived experience that might be engaging in service, as you would with those working on the project. Adopting a co-production approach provides better outcomes for both those delivering a project and those receiving the support. By recognising the fact that both professionals and service users have vital contributions to make, the first principle of co-production is accessibility. All parties must have a fair and equal access to all discussions and activities. Next is equality. No one person is any more important than anyone else in the process. Everyone's assets should all be given equal weight. Then, diversity. One of the most important aspects of co-production is giving voice to those who might be underrepresented in their communities. And finally, reciprocity. Giving back to those who help to shape your service by helping to build positive relationships. Incorporating elements of co-production into our project completely changed the way that we deliver our service. Inviting people from the communities we serve to be involved in the way that the project is shaped has allowed us unique insight into how we can best tailor key elements of our project as a whole. Many services choose to look at the concept as a jigsaw of four constituent elements. The first piece of the puzzle is culture. It's important to look deeper into your organisational values. For co-production to take root, emphasis needs to be on enabling growth and change rather than seeing care as a one-way process. The second is structure. Co-production can be hindered without clearly defined roles, goals and objectives for your teams. How are processes developed currently and how could this be adapted to create the right environment for input from the community? Thirdly, practice. This covers the way in which you build relationships between staff and volunteers effectively and ensure that equal opportunity for input is given to all. The last element is review. Co-production in practice does not work as a one-off. It requires continual development and assessment with goals and outcomes being evaluated in an ongoing process. We want to share with you two examples of co-production in practice, elements of our service that have been developed alongside the community. The first is our Get Connected Toolkit. At the start of our service, we were using standardised paper questionnaires to assess and monitor our service users' attitudes to financial wellbeing and overall health. What we found early on was that people were struggling to engage with these forms because the questions were far too abstract and the nuances too complex to answer effectively. At this point, we reached out to Claire Craig at Lab for Living, a research group at Sheffield Hallam University who helped us to assess our way of working and create new co-production materials. We knew through our work that tangible objects, photographs, materials can really help to scaffold conversation and we had a great deal of experience and methods of working alongside communities to create these. The starting point for the work were meetings with Lewis and his team to really kind of capture something of the broader context, to listen really carefully to what people were telling him about um, the challenging subject of finance and some of the obstacles that they faced. The outcome was the Get Connected Toolkit, a physical, tangible resource which enabled a better understanding and higher engagement when assessing financial well-being and social hopes. The final version centres around the use of imagery and a variety of tactile prompts to evoke conversations and collect those mixed data sets. Through the process of co-production, better relationships have been built between the service and its users who saw the value of their input and the positive impact they had on their communities. The second element of co-production we wanted to share was our community expert group. This steering group is made up of current and past service users and serves a variety of purposes. It exists as an open forum. Each meeting elements of service delivery are discussed. Service users can ask questions, provide feedback and share their own successes or problems. 
These issues often relate to their community and local services, which allows us to then better understand areas that may need addressing. It's very easy to feel unneeded, um, but I think there is a need to feel included um, and for others to tap into what we as individuals have to offer um, in terms of giving something back to society. But I think that dealing with real live people that can genuinely give an insight into an otherwise closed world is something that I would say that, that is important to, and, and the bonus, the payoff as it were for that, um, is a personal one, and that is, is you feel needed again. In 2021, the effects of the pandemic mean that many services have closed their doors permanently, and those that remain must seek to adapt in order to survive. What we are being left with is a void, a gap that now exists between the support that our communities desperately need and the support that the remaining services are able to provide. The solution seems to be that our services need to be better in tailoring the help that they offer. By utilising elements of a co-production approach, we can all seek first to understand before being understood. It's time that we as organisations demand change. Change from within our services and change from the sector as a whole. It's time that we speak to our staff and to our leaders about what we can do to ensure that the voices of those we want to help are heard. It's time that we as individuals demand to be heard from the services that we access. Nothing about us without us. The benefits are self-evident, but sadly, the cost of inactivity could result in an irreversible widening of the void. We found that members of the community who are consulted will often demonstrate a dedication to their role, with a desire to help others who may be experiencing difficulties that they have faced themselves, and to create tangible change for their communities. A co-production approach is also an invitation for your service to be challenged constructively by pushing you as professionals to think beyond the learned existing ways of service delivery. If you would like to learn more about our project or even access our toolkit as an online learning resource, you can do so via the link provided with this video. Thanks for watching.